104 flight controller. Well, all in one flight controller. Um, this was sent to me by Armiton for review. So uh, thanks for them to send it over to me. Um, uh, I'm going to just break it down on the bench and then start talking about what I'm going to do with it next. So, um, as I said, this is an all in one flight controller. Comes in a nice little box. In there, you've got your usual bits and pieces. So you've got a little cable that I'll talk about a little bit later on. You've got your um, little gummies for going in the corners, which are nice and bright. So they come with it. So that's what you get in the box. So this is an all-in-one flight controller. It is a flight controller and power distribution board. So you can tell that by the fact it's got the ESC power on there and you can then attach your XT60 on the back. Um, it has a current regulator on it so uh, it will pass information to your flight controller so you can get your voltage of your batteries while flying which is really useful. I use that all the time. Um, it also is, it's a, it's got Beta flight, so it's a beta flight uh, flight controller. It has an OSD on it, so standard beta flight OSD, which is great. Um, most of the beta flight flight controllers do have an OSD. Um, Kiss controllers and race flight ones, you normally need to put something separate on, uh, but it's really good. I, I, I really like the OSD. It's a very helpful thing to have. You can get you can have as much junk on there as little as as you want, and I'll show you what I will have on mine. Um, it has a SD card on the back, so you can put in your SD card and you can then put your black footage footage in there so that will help you with tuning your quad and making it as good as it can possibly be. Um, it has a BEC in it so it has voltage regulation so you can put into here anything from 2S up to a 6S straight into this um, so you can go straight from, from the battery into this so that's great but it will also output either a 9 volt or a 5 volt. This one is soldered already for 9 volt, it also has 5 volt pins for going out to your receivers etc. I think if I'm brightly this is to do with the video power specifically. So you can output to your video power, on the back you've got your buzzer and a couple of other TX's on there for being able to have our outputs. Um, the form factor is the standard form factor so it's going to fit into most of your normal sort of 5 inch quads. Um, it'll also fit into things like the Jalapura and things like that. Uh, so it's got the rubber grommets as we said so they're there to reduce vibration so that you get as good a signal as possible. If this is vibrating you don't get as good a... Um, when the cycle is going around to measure where this board is in space if you've got vibrations going through it, it picks that up and distorts the signal. So this just all helps to reduce that down. Um, it has got a nice little cable that comes with it. So this goes with, this cable is goes to a ESC, so all in one ESC. And what it has is it has a signal wire for each of the motors coming out of it. But this one also has got quite a nice feature of the fact it also has um, a single cable for the voltage regulator if there's a voltage regulator on your all-in-one ESC which is really good because it means you can you don't have to do too much faffing around um, it's one of those things where this has got a voltage regulator your ESC has got a voltage regulator uh, it just becomes really complicated and it doesn't need to be so this actually is a really nice little touch that goes on there uh, it has got so on the there we go so as you can see from the pin layout we've got all our camera ones on the front so this is facing to the front of the quad. We've got all the camera controls here which is great and then we've got all the video transmission so your video from your camera comes into this end, passes through and then comes back out this end to your transmitter. Uh, it also has LED outputs on there as well. So it's quite nice because it also has um, a couple of camera control pins um, so I can actually solder onto here the camera control which I might do, um, but I'll probably do that as a separate video because I'm not, I haven't done it before, so I'm not 100% con convinced by it, but I don't really see the need, but I'll, I'll have a go and see if it impresses me. Something that I really like is it's built for, obviously, smart audio. Um, it also has all the inverters built in there, so for S bus you don't have to do any messing about, that just works. Smart audio should just work, so I connect this up and can then control my video transmitter in there. Um, the reason this is the latest version, the reason that Armaton sent these over to get people to review, is that they have their previous version of this, the 1.2, has had issues with certain ESCs. So I am going to be using um, in my build some of my standard. Let me find one. Um, uh, Speedex ES30 HVs because I have loads of them and that's what I use. So I'm going to be building a set with uh, a drone with these in it. 
Um, and I quite like the layout of this. I mean, it's it's designed to be simple and fit in. And as it's a race board, I'm going to build a race drone, which I haven't done before. So what I'll do next is I'm going to take you into the drone I'm going to build. Right, so here is my CL Racing F4S board installed into my Mongoose frame. Um, pretty straightforward build, went in really nicely, really easy to use. Um, everything's really sensibly laid out actually. Um, the camera controls, the camera's at all the front, so all the signal wires and power are at the front there. Um, the At the back we then obviously have the video transmitter. The only thing that was a bit re weird was the, the receiver. The receiver's at the front, whereas most of the time I fit it at the back, so that was a little bit odd but not a massive problem. The buzzer's underneath and what I've done to make that work is I've just attached it with a, there we go, I've just attached it to the uh, XC60 lead. So I've run quite a long cable because I wasn't sure how much I needed because I don't tend to use, um, I've not underslung batteries before. <laughs> So that was pretty good. Um, so overall, really impressed with that board in terms of being able to build it. It was really easy to use. The only exception is that trying to solder onto this particular pad here was really, really difficult. And the reason it's really difficult is because underneath that pad is where the XT60 um, negative, or ground, whatever you want to call it, um, is. That meant that this took an awful lot of heat to actually solder to. So on other boards, normally you end up with them off the side somewhere, and um, therefore they're not trying to do two things. And what was happening was that this was at the XT60 was acting as a massive heat sink and really absorbing that heat away. So I had to heat that up a lot to actually make that solder. So overall, really impressed with the board. It worked really well. Was easy to install. That was the only thing I had a problem with, and I don't think that's a massive issue. It's just something to be aware of. Right. So now it's going to quickly go take some um, take you through some of the stuff I've done on beach flight and then we'll go and take it out and fly it. So let's just take a quick tour around what I've done on Beast Flight. So when we connect, let's quickly go into ports. So my receiver is on UART1, so that's got serial uh, RX setup on it. Um, and on UART4, we have TBS Smart Audio because I'm running a Unify Pro in there. Configuration rise, we're running on DShot 600. I know this will run on uh, 1200, but I haven't. My ESCs won't run at that. Um, I'm having a few problems getting the gyro to go on to 37 kilohertz, but I think that's because the version of Beachflight I'm running. I'm just running the stock one that ever came with it, which is it is 3.2.3. So name the craft, done the usual bits and pieces. RSID, RSSI is on there. Standard configuration, so air mode is permanently enabled, OSD is on, anti-gravity is on, dynamic filtering is on, I turned off a number of the beepers. Um, the battery indicator actually worked straight out of the box, so I didn't need to change any of that. That just literally worked, so I was really happy with that. Didn't have to do any measurements on those. The PIDs are currently exactly as they are, so I haven't done any changes, so it's as it comes out of the box. Receiver's all set up. Mode, so my usual mode setup's on there, so I have an arm with a pre-arm. I have a, um, I've got turtle mode enabled, I've got a fail safe on one of my buttons, and I have a, a, a mode that allows me to change between angle, horizon, and full acro. Um, OSD wise, usual sort of stuff, so I'm just showing um, milliamps, total voltage, average cell voltage, um, craft name, which is my uh, handle, um, RSSI, uh, and my flight time. I like my flight time, I know it's quite important to me. So that's a quick tour around what I've set up in Beta Flight. Now let's go take it out to a field. So welcome to a rather snowy Biggles Wade Rugby Club. So this is my test bed location. Um, me and a few guys regularly meet down here. It's a nice open space. It's got a few objects you can fly around, um, including a lift. This flight controller, I'm really impressed with. This is a true maiden flight. This is the first time I've flown it and I have done nothing to it. This is straight out of the box. No, no changes, nothing. Now, the rates are a little bit low for me. I prefer slightly different rates, but that's my preference. And it probably needs a little bit of tuning, but from a straight out of the box perspective, it's really, really good. It, it um, didn't get upset when I was doing uh, lots of yaw. It didn't get upset when I was doing flips, etc. Um, so I'm just trying to see that it's behaving in the right way. Um, so 
everything works from that perspective. Now I'm using DVR footage here because I obviously haven't fitted a GoPro camera to this particular frame. I will be doing a review on this frame and the camera that's on it, but uh, that's another day. So as a summing up, realistically as a whole build, the flight controller was a really good price. They are around £30. You can pick them up for a few sources. Um, you can get them from companies like Infinity Drone in the UK. Other vendors do have these. Um, it was really straightforward to build, really easy to put together. The soldering work was really straightforward with the exception of that one issue I had with the XT60 and the ground wire um, for one of the ESCs where they're so close that they had to get the heat into them. Um, really really worked from that perspective um, smart audio works straight out of the box no changes there um, receiver works straight out of the box uh, camera works straight out of the box so from a simple build perspective i really would recommend this flight controller is it's a very straightforward flight controller to use um, and i've had absolutely no problems with it when i've been flying it so hopefully you've enjoyed this video um, i will be doing some other reviews on other parts of uh, the frame in this video but I um, didn't get a chance to film any of that today because it started raining immediately after this flight. Right thanks very much for your time everyone and I will speak to you next time.